Thank you again for coming on out. We're going to have a fun session today. So what's the, the one question that a lot of BA practitioners, or what the, every question a BA practitioner is given, what's the normal answer? It depends, right? I mean, you guys all know that, right? So we kind of designed this presentation to help with maybe not answering it depends, but kind of addressing the it depends. And it's it depends why? It's, it depends, right? <laughs> there are many reasons, right? But one of the main reasons is that every situation is a little different. The analogy I like to give is every project, every initiative, every engagement that we're on is kind of like a snowflake. They might look a little similar from afar, but as you get up close, there's a lot of differences, and no one snowflake is the same, and it's the same thing with our projects and our initiatives. So you, have, you can't use one single approach to every situation, right? It depends on that situation. That's why you say it depends, right? It's the context in which you are in, the people that you're dealing with, the project characteristics that are going on that will make you determine how you're going to approach the situation. So instead of just talking about different approaches, what we decided to do is play a little game like Dancing with the Stars, and we just flipped it. Uh, actually, Paul Mulvey had the initial thought around this to let's do BA with the stars. So we decided to, you can see we have our judges panel over here. Uh, we have experts and we have BA stars. And what's going to happen is we presented them with a scenario. And they've been working, and some of you have been in the room early, so you kind of saw the behind the scenes of BA with the stars. But they've been working over the last hour, and that's it. It's the only time they've had to work. So they've been working for the last hour on their approach to that same scenario. So you're going to see differences and what we want you to get out of this is to see that every situation can be handled in multiple ways and hopefully you'll be introduced to some techniques that maybe you haven't used it in that way before and get some ideas on how you can think about and critically think about your situations when you're uh, put on a project and wherever you land on that project, okay? So first, let me uh, get my computer working and then I will introduce the folks. So. We have the BA expert team and volunteer stars. So we have Hans Ekman and Sherry Moran. Where are you? All right. Stand up. I think they're actually our third group. Our first folks coming up are going to be Paul Mulvey and John uh, Foft. Obviously, they don't like each other as much. They, they, we had to break them up during the, uh, you know, the last hour. It got a little ugly. Uh, right. Yeah, John just said, spend an hour with Paul. You wouldn't want to be with him either. Um, and then we have Russ, Russ Pena and Colette Blanton. Right. You guys are going to get to, to see all them. And we also have our judges. Yes, we have Jonathan Babcock on my left. Kate McGoey in the middle there. And I think that's her. What's the, the woman's name on Dancing with the Stars? I uh, carry on, carry it right. She usually sits in the middle too, I think. And then Ryland Layton is our. Right. So, um, so let's. And all of our volunteers are going to get a little gift at the end, and we'll talk about that. Um, so, so what? No dancing. So exactly how it's going to work? What's going to happen here? Each group is going to come up. We're going to start with John and Paul, and they're going to present their scenario, their approach to the scenario. I'm going to show you guys what that is in a second. And after they present to the group, the judges are going to get to chime in. And they're going to have to give their feedback, ask them questions, see what they come up with. Once all the judges have given their feedback and kind of killed them and been real critical um, on the approach that they were taking, uh, they're then going to vote on how they did, right? Just like they do in Dancing with the Stars. Then the next group will come up, and then the third group will come up, and in the end, you guys, ultimately, America gets to vote for, for the, true, the true winner who will win the uh, coveted prize that is underneath this podium. So please think about, watch what's going on, and in the end, by applause, you guys are going to get to pick the winner, okay? All right, so here's the scenario. Um, been assigned to a project for a mobile app for a restaurant. And here are the three items that they've been given. That's all they've been given. And you guys can read that. This is all they've been given. And they had to make a number of assumptions to come up with their approach. So, um, so sit back and enjoy the show. So we can have John come on up. John and Paul. I think you guys were picked to be number one. The 
fact that we're number one is not coincidence. <laughs> Before we start, I just, um, I ended up with actually nine drink tickets last night, and I just wanted, just to be kind, give our judges each a drink ticket, because I figure if this is tough work, and uh, my little bit of liquid refreshment might help them think about us a little bit better. I think it's just because he only has three left. <laughs> All right, John, take it away. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just a little background. I'm a, a business analyst for Genuine Parts, commonly known as Napa. I've been in the business for about eight years as a business analyst, but before that I was a developer for 30 years. So I've been in IT, I've been in the business, and here's my presentation. So the first thing we're going to establish is a series of meetings for our stakeholders. So in order to do that, we're going to set an agenda, we're going to analyze the stakeholders, identify our stakeholders, we're going to develop an understanding for the session for our scoping, and then we're going to do a deeper dive. Because obviously we want to get from here, from the very starting point, to the ending point. And this is often the hardest part of doing business analysis. Yeah, when, when John and I first started talking about this, uh, we started going as, okay, John, so what are you going to do, right? I say, I'm going to start asking you questions. And he says, well, first got to get started. And I'm like, John, that is the perfect place to start at the beginning. So that's why we had a little Monopoly board thing there. Go. So we passed Go. We got $200, and now we're competing. <laughs> now, in general, we like to work in teams. And I think the most successful thing you can do is work as a team. Okay, so part of the team is going to involve the development group, the QA group, obviously the business is involved. We also have something called solution architects in our business. And we also want to make sure that we include the, a good representation of the users. So, why, why, why did you choose each one of those people in the team? Well, so why, one why of the reasons involved? why we chose development and QA is some of our best subject matter experts are in the development group and the QA group. Clearly the QA team understands the current application, if we have a current application, and they can provide the ins and outs that perhaps the business analysts may not know. Okay, so just a cross-section of, of people in there, All right? We're not Luddites, actually. This is the only tools that we've been given, so we didn't yes. have a time for a full-blown physio presentation, so it was only an hour. Understand that. We had one drawn up, but we were uh, crossed out. <laughs> okay, so our understanding sessions. We're going to have one or two, maybe, sessions. And the purpose is that, really, we need to know what the business wants. And we also need to know what the business and why the business wants it. So we're going to do brainstorming sessions. We're going to analyze the outcome. We're going to uh, clarify our requirements. So uh, from the brainstorming perspective, we're going to identify scope and uh, use the business justification. Our outcome is a general understanding of the direction that the company wants. OK, we're going to clarify the, uh, the requirements um, for instance, one of the, one of the points that uh, was in the uh, breakdown of what we're supposed to do is the word customize. It says customize the menu. As a business analyst, my question would be, what does customize mean to the user? Does this mean that they're going to be able to select certain things from the menu? Are they going to be able to tailor that? So for instance, if they, have a, if they order a salad, will they be able to order specific salad dressings on the salad? Will they also be able to additionally ask specific things, like, I don't want croutons on the salad if it comes with croutons? Yeah, I thought this was a really good point that we're going into a meeting uh, with stakeholders and we have an idea, okay, customized list of menus. 
I go into it thinking, okay, this is like a pizza shop. I'm going to order a pizza. I can have mushrooms on it. I do not want anchovies whatsoever on my pizza. But I'm going into it with that perspective. John's thinking about it. Well, customized might mean, hey, I want to have this. I want to have a Cobb salad. Hold the grapes. I'm allergic to grapes. I want balsamic vinaigrette only if it's Newman's light vinaigrette. I'm like, dude, you're going off program with that one, right? So. Figuring out what the assumptions that we're operating under. Kent talked about that to us yesterday. What are the assumptions that we're going under here? Customized means from a defined list of what they're able to customize. Right? You can customize a Subway sandwich, but in only so many ways. So from this session, I'm going to take away a basic understanding of what the business wants and what they need. So, from the, uh, from the scoping session outcome, we're going to have a bulleted list. And this bulleted list is what's in scope for this project from the, from the business owner's perspective and what's not in scope. It's important to identify both of those. Now, one thing to note here, as uh, Paul mentioned earlier, we are not Luddites here, but a bulleted list, in my estimation, is perhaps the best when you're dealing with non-technical uh, consumers. I mean, the idea is we have a restaurant. We have, uh, we have uh, business owners who are not necessarily familiar with this, what a swim lane is. So I think it's important to give them something that speaks to them. We have so many diagrams and tools available to us. Why, oh why did you speak in a bulleted list instead of a beautiful diagram? Well, because I think they can consume that better. I think they'll understand that better. <gasps> they can consume it better. <laughs> Perhaps we were actually speaking in the business's Business language. language. <laughs> <laughs> so, as part of the brainstorming sessions, will have an uh, opportunity for the business and for the users to identify what they want out of this process, okay, and what they want out of the delivery, okay. They will identify important aspects of this, basically, you know, with your stickies, you get them to write things down, this is important to me, then you will rank those and you'll get the team to rank those. What I also like to do in instances like this is also include an estimate from the team. So the team will actually look at both of these, will we'll come up with their own solution, and will compare those and find gaps and, and identify those. So we decide whether, you know, is this requirement really necessary? And if it is, this is the effort level that's going to, it's going to take. We've, we've included the importance and the time, that's our axes. Why do we want to do this kind of work? Why don't we just start coding? It's a good question. I mean, ultimately, that's where solutions fail. If you design before you even know what the requirements are, what your business need is, then you're liable to fail. Business need. So one of the uh, one of the keys after this is our deeper dive, and this is when we begin storyboarding the process. We'll design scenarios from the user perspective and from the consumer's perspective. We'll also perhaps use some mockups, wireframing. There are all sorts of techniques to use with that. <clears throat> I like one of the suggestions that Kent had yesterday, which is basically just draw it up on a sheet of paper because one of the things that the uh, users have a tendency to do is get married to a design if they see it actually in use. So try to, you know, try to make your mock-ups as simple as possible. Notice before we're even doing this how many charts we're in, how many steps we've gone through before we're actually starting to do storyboards and mock-ups. Now one of the keys at this point is as a business analyst, you should be managing expectations. Managing expectations for the team, 
managing expectations for the <coughs> consumer. And this is where, <coughs> excuse me, this is where we get into the negotiation phase. So if they want something in particular from a business perspective, and the technical team feels like it can't be delivered or it can be delivered at great cost, you have to make both sides aware of that. And if it truly is, for whatever reason, say there's a, say there's a legal requirement, then you have to understand that there's an X cost for that. Well, it was interesting at, at this stage, and if I'm going over time like I normally do, if someone please tell me, uh, what we were talking about in this stage was that you're actually part of a triangular arrangement. So you have little stick figures here. Have a, a, B, um, a BA is involved with your business and your developer. And you're not in between them. You're not in between them. And if everyone remembers, it was in Jeffrey's session talking about the ferry boat. Remember this? Okay, you're not in between them going back and forth. You're enhancing, you're managing those expectations, you're facilitating the discussions, you're holding both sides accountable. If one side requests something, BA says, why do you need that thing? Why is probably the most single most important word in your entire vocabulary, all right? Think toddler, why? Right, we, 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 we hear that all the time. Yeah, we talk about the five whys. You should always ask not one why, not two whys, but five whys. It's important to keep asking that and keep following up on that. Why? <laughs> okay, and then the final slide is we should always ask questions. And this is not limited to the elicitation phase. There is so much that we're involved with as business analysts. We are not just in a certain time frame within a project. We are involved from start to finish, from the initiation of a project to the delivery and support of a project. Now our involvement may vary at certain times, but we should always be asking questions. And we ask so that we can understand. Thank you.
thing that did come up a little late, and, and I also was kind of disturbed by the lack of objectives. So if, I love that you prioritized all the requirements to make sure that if you couldn't do it all, you understood what the effort was and what the time was, but there was no sense of whether they actually did tie to the objective, what the value of those things was. So for me, it was missing a value component that I think was really important. Um, but I really did appreciate the fact that you were kind of getting all the stakeholders on the same page first with the facilitated session and putting that out there. I do have one question. So in your scoping session, you were going to have a basic understanding of the flow. Was that the flow that they wanted or the flow that they, like which flow was that? So that's the flow of the business need. It would be the need. Okay, so that was more the as is part before you're getting yes. to the TV. Okay, yes. so point. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, you did some great tailoring. And so my, my big challenge was just lack of objectives with that. So my role is usually to play the part of Simon Cowell. <laughs> Mr. Frankie Pants. So there's always one. There's yes. always one. So um, honestly, I kind of feel like I had half a meal. Is where I got to. Um, this. Well, you had a drink ticket. I had a drink ticket. <laughs> um, and and we'll, we'll be discussing that discussing that again. Uh -huh. So no. Um, honestly, I think that um, I was looking for okay, where are we going with this? I, I wasn't really sure, but we never got into how are you going to deliver. The, what's the solution going to look like? What's the scope? What, I mean, you talked about scope a lot, but um, this was a very waterfall process, clearly. I'm not mistaken about that, right? Right. Okay. And what I was seeing was a very strong discussion of an exploration of business need. Um, I really liked the effort diagram. I'm, uh, it's something I'm actually just going to go ahead and lift the next time product is, uh, my product owners are kind of stuck and saying, well, we want to do this, we want to know about effort. I'm like, tell me, we'll go back to you on effort. We'll get back to you on effort. Tell me what the value is first. Just think of that value. It's like, all about the value, um, and, and that, and, and it seemed that you were very broad on who to bring in. So I'm guessing your, your uh, direction to do this stuff is a very JAD approach. Everybody at every meeting, that kind of thing. I'm glad you said expectation of stakeholders. Um, I noticed that you were, you were being very clear with them about what was going to be necessary from them to make a successful project. Um, but where you left off was translating this into what are we going to deliver? Okay. Um, I didn't see you discuss that at all. Actually, we're going to. We had a solution scope discussion. A certain amount of what's in, what's out, what could be there, certain amount of process discussions you were describing, but never saying, and from here I'm going to go into functionals, and from here I'm going to build out prototypes, and from here I'm going to, so I didn't see where everything else is going to be delivered, kind of like they're going to order the meal, but where in your discussion are they going to get to eat it? So, um, so uh, but with that, the first half was very strong, that was a good thing, and to be honest, you also had a very difficult position, as we've learned from our last time, of going first, because they still now be addressing those concerns later on. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking that into account here. So, but uh, strong Thank discussion you. of the first one. Okay, well, judges, it is now time to vote. Jonathan, we'll start with you. An eight. All right. Seven. No, don't feel bad, kid. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with Nails. Well, All right. Good job, guys. All right. If you want to switch the mic with Colette, we're going to have a uh, two-second commercial break here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so we're going to bring up Colette and Russ Pena. Come on up. Jesse. Uh, since I didn't have drink tickets to bribe you with, I just so happen to have three extra Marriott ball <laughs> You can't get enough of these things. I'm really happy. You've never been that desperate. Don't put don't put on. 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 So while, while Colette's getting yeah. mic'd up, I'll, I'll just say this. We, Colette and I took the approach, uh, given our, our constraint, that we were, we were coming at this with a well-informed, very vetted, formalized stakeholder community. So our scope statements that were provided to us is what we use, utilized as a basis for uh, decomposition into uh, our specific scenarios. So Colette, I'll let you take it away. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. 
Again, my name is Colette Blanton. Um, I guess a little bit about myself. Um, I've had over eight to nine years of business analyst experience. I typically contract in various different industries. Um, and that's about me, so let's get to the presentation. Um, so, yes, as we said, so we put a lot of assumptions together here and we'd already um, flushed out. So what we focused on, or we took the approaches, taking some of the elements that I learned from day one, and also um, to get into the actual, what the BA would actually do in terms of the analysis portion. And why I actually want to get documented to show to my customers. So, um, based on the scenario that we had, so just to refresh, it is the, uh, a mobile app. And our app is for chow cuisine, because I like Chinese. And, um, <laughs> and um, so our customer, or our sponsor, wants them to be able to order these items and um, actually customize what they order. Um, it also involved in that is they wanted them to be able to pay for it before they reach the restaurant. And also, they have several different restaurants, several different locations, so they want them to be able to pick which location. So from that um, information, we started off, and this is where you start off with some type of um, process and flow, and I decided on this term to use the use case diagram that gives an overall flow. And so what we have here is that the um, use case where we will dive in later, where we will pick the menu item. Then as the customer, we're going to determine the quantity because uh, I might want spring rolls and fried rice, but it might be a group of us. So we may want two portions of fried rice or two portions of spring rolls. So we want to be able to pick the item and determine the quantity um, and possibly customize that menu item because um, the fried rice, we don't want the peas in it because we don't like peas. So we want to be able to give them that type of, um, and dive into that type of opportunity of um, customizing. Then um, they will be able to review that order that they have placed for the number of items, the customer, and um, then move on to make the payment with the financial. So the payment actually then, once you make the payment, can go to the financial institute that would accept that payment and it would return back. And then after all of that, then they would determine the location. So they want to go to the Marietta location and that will come to the end of the high level overview of the different use cases. So now they've been able to make their order, customize that order, uh, make a payment on that order and choose their location. And at the end of that, the staff at that particular location can actually see their order. Um, so um, I'll, uh, the, the level of granularity that, that we took, um, we also obviously included underneath each one of these use cases would be your happy path and your alternate scenarios yes. Yes. and how, it, how they loop back into, from an alternate scenario, back into your happy path should it take that direction. Yes, absolutely. Um, I wanted to add about, I did actually have the question so that we didn't bring up, which was about business objective. So, if I could add into that quickly, yes. is that um, with this, because we had the statement of the scenarios, took the approach that one of the points was that they wanted to speed up the order. So the key thing, one of these key overall object objectives here is that their customers could overall quickly, or in a fast way, order, um, create their orders before they can get to the restaurant. So that was our overall business objective and what we're trying to do here in the direction. Um, I had a slew of questions for Coop, which he didn't answer them. So, <laughs> and, and, and the, so I didn't do it. <laughs> and in the spirit of speed and efficiency to meet that business objective, obviously uh, we built in the make payment. Uh, and and uh, in our discussions as we were talking about meeting that business objective, we said, well, let's say for the sake of an argument that uh, my order was $22 and Russ Pena only had 19 in his account, um, we would allow other options in those alternate sequences uh, for functionality that would address maybe bringing in cash payment. Right. If I went into my couch and sort of scooped up change. So in the real life scenario for me as well on that, before we move on, this, this was what I would call, what we're discussing is the deep dive. This is just the first layer. And um, we would have a lot more use cases to discuss the ultimate paths. Should we move on? Okay. Uh, actually, ours isn't just an order, right? Yeah. 
So um, I went to the behavior model class, I'm not sure if the speaker's here. So um, what I wanted to do was, um, this is a conference where we learn things, so I figured let me try and utilize what I learned from that. So what I liked was the general business language. So what we took was from these outline, this happy path of the use cases, came up with some um, business natural language to describe that. So now this is what we could do to our business owners and even to the IT folks as a starting line. So just to give some examples here, we have um, the first part. Um, I obviously being the customer, I want to order Chinese. I pick my menu item and the quantity and then um, my order is presented to me. Um, the next part in that is that um, I've created an order. I, uh, now I've created the order. I have my spring rolls and my fried rice, two of each. Um, I can see I now submit my name and my payment information and then I see my com payment confirmation number. Now we're still going with the happy path here. And then the final part being that now I've paid for my order, I need to ch I'm like, I choose my location, then I see my order con confirmation number. So this is, um, I thought this was very helpful to me, and so I wanted to carry that over because at some point sometimes we have to do natural language to our diagrams. So this would be um, a quick example of how I do that high level. Um, so and, and a lot of this information is going to help us uh, drive out what the specific uh, details are within each of our scenarios. So you think about the decomposition of, of your use case analysis. You think about uh, at least one happy path and, and hopefully at least one alternate sequence of some kind. Uh, and so these, these this type of dialogue in business speak allows us to meet with the business and for them to, to sort of all of us to understand at more of a granular level what the goal of the overall use case is so that we can begin to build in functionality. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the last part to this would be some type of visual just to support. Um, and this area isn't fully fleshed out, I would say. We only had an hour. So we didn't have time to do full wireframes and, and nice prototyping. Right, and I was swaying between the wireframes which I because uh, it gets a little design mode, to just wanting to kind of like show an example of it. So I'm going to go here because this one's a little bit more. Yeah, and I think, that, I think that Colette made a great point when we were, I, I started talking immediately about, uh, let's, you know, and I was thinking competitively, Hans over there is certainly going to be, be doing prototypes, you know, fancy things on these pieces of paper. So I wanted to do that. And Colette sort of reined me in and she was like, well, you know what, I think that it, rather than get into design right now, let's let's think about these things from a more high level and, and really more from about a functionality perspective on how we're going to meet the business goal. So she even kind of pulled the star back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'll do my best to keep this short and sweet show what we got here and a little bit what here we had, the two approaches. So this is kind of like the more mock-up so that when you go through the business language, you can also um, kind of take a visual approach here in terms of picking the menu items and see here now we get into group it. So this is an example of the deep diving and the more questions that will come up. You know, I'm saying you pick a menu list, well, was you thinking it to be in the same menu order as if you have in your restaurant, appetizer, entrees, that type of thing. And then um, here is the quantity. Do we want to do the quantity every time you pick a menu item? Is it at the end? Um, kind of explore into that a little bit more. And then the reviewing to show that, okay, they get to see their final order. Next part being the payment, which allows us to discuss some of the, the actual data attributes that's involved in the name and the payment and um, some of those um, alternate parts as far as like if the payment, what happens if the credit card is blocked or it comes back denied. And the last part, which isn't here, obviously, would be um, something that would show, okay, the location. And, you know, do we want to go all out and show all GPS, Google, and what, what we're trying to, what are you trying to do, what is the business need in this location part? And the second part here, which didn't get very far, so I'm not sure if you can really see it, was kind of um, moving along that whole behavior model of yesterday, where it's kind of, you just kind of enter in kind of what you're talking through. So you actually enter in. 
my spring rolls, quantity two. If I rise, you see the quantity, then you might get the total, and then it would move on to just give kind of the, the data attributes to come to the same example. Very good. <laughs> Judges, go easy. What do you got for them? Kate, you want to kick us off on this one? I was really happy with the focus on objectives and that you narrowed it down to the business goal of speeding the order process, so that was really awesome point there. I kind of like Jonathan mentioned before, I love the fact that you kind of started with scope and kind of range, you know, look at the whole big picture to see kind of where you're going with it and then focus on how you build that stuff out. But I'm a little curious if you spent any time talking to either users or the restaurant about how do they do ordering now? Like, what's the as is? Kind of dove right into solution and solution scoping. Um, although you did talk about the functional and the, the key business objectives and speeding up the process, which is good, but I didn't see a sense that you looked at what the process was prior to the app to know how you were going to speed that up. But um, uh, the other question I had was, did you talk to users? Or was it more of the focus of, I like Chinese, so I'm going to do it. Was there another user involved in this? <laughs> well, again, given, given our time constraint, we went in with... I know, with, well, with, you did have questions and Cooper answered them. I did we, do that. We, we, we went in with that sort of thought that a well-informed user community. Just, just checking, because, you know, the UX friends among us would say, no, they use her for they are not you. So, I know. Okay. But, no, that was really cool. I think you did a great job. <laughs> um, so, I like the... Uh, diagrams a lot and uh, uh, a little disclosure actually Paulette and I worked together at one point where I got schooled a great degree about um, uh, use cases and uh, use case catalogs and honestly it's something I think of now every time I go into projects because of uh, the, the um, help I was given at that stage so I'm very glad you were at it. Um, uh, I guess I was looking at this thinking um, I also didn't see a stakeholder analysis piece where we're saying who will be involved, who's going to be my be, you know, my advisory committee, who will be my stakeholders on, as, on the projects that I'm going through. Um, I like very much how the prototype kind of stood as a proxy for a functional requirements analysis, kind of saying, if I do these things, then I get them. Um, it looked like the process was somewhere, it, in, my, in my mind, I'm looking towards, is this more of an agile, is this more of a waterfall, how, how is this working? Clearly, you're progressing from business need through what we're going to deliver, so that piece is there. Um, and it, it seemed to me that we're kind of using the, the prototypes as a proxy for functional requirements and exploration from, from the use cases being these are my needs and this is going to be my how I deliver um, with the acceptance criteria being in many ways the inverse of a functional requirement. So I like those things. Um, uh, I guess my only thing is you know, thinking through stakeholder analysis and uh, how we can check on you know, would this be acceptable to, to folks. Um, but I think the prototyping efforts look Thank you. All right, judges. Oh, Jonathan, sorry. <laughs> I first just wanted to say, good for you for using what you've learned. You know, I think that's, that's the whole reason we come to... to, to Hopefully you, you've Even added... Even if it was from Jeffrey, right? Even if it was from Jeffrey. Right, yeah, let's make that clear. <laughs> I think I read somewhere and I'm, I probably blew 
butchering it, but it's better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. Sometimes we drill in and we give something that looks really official, really polished, really clean and fit, but it's wrong. And so it's better for us to stick with what we know is right now and stop until we know more. And you did that. I thought that was really good. Good job. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Good feedback. So what, uh, what are the scores for our teams here? Kate, you want to start us up? An eight? Oh, you stepped up a little. Thank you. Ryland? I'm going to nine. Nice, thank you. Up one here. And Jonathan? Six. Oh, Very good. Take that, Moby. Awesome. So let's get, let's get the other group up here. And while they're coming up, I want to ask the contestants, so, so how do you feel about the judges' scores? I mean, how would you feel up there? Did you prepare enough? Yeah, I did a little bit of homework. <laughs> so I will say, Colette sent me an email over the weekend. I responded, said, no, I can't answer those questions, sorry. And then this morning, on my way in, I see an email pop up. It says, hey, Coop, a few more questions. And it's got a list. Of, she's like, so what are the real objectives of the, the client? So the, the whole thing was, I give a very small piece, because how do you guys get assigned to projects. Do you get all the information off the bat? No. So at times you have to make assumptions and that's what I ask Colette and the rest of the players to do, to make assumptions of what you think might happen and show where you might ask those questions. But the good thing about Colette, she had a you know, laundry list of questions because she didn't know the answers and that's the key to this, right? Is that don't just assume what's on the paper or what you're given is the answer. Ask the questions and validate. So good job. All right. So our, our final contestants, we have Sherry and Hans. Come on up. Well, thank you. I have the honor of introducing Sherry Moran. She is one of the few natives of Atlanta, currently living in Johns Creek and working at Macy's. She is also surviving three teenagers at home, so she has the endurance to really complete your project. And I think you're going to see from her approach that she, really, this is the person you want leading your business analysis. Sure, take it away. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we uh, are excited to present to you what we think uh, you need in a mobile app for your restaurant. And um, we think that this is our ultimate destination to provide for you what you need. And um, in doing so, we hope to um, what we would like to do is we would want to take a look at your four wall structure today and we would want to look at how your um, processes work today and we would want to, uh, to, to determine do you already have takeout and that sort of thing and if so then how would we grow that into this mobile app and um, so through this process we would then discover you know your as is and uh, what can be and I'm sure there probably would be some, maybe some, even some inflections of features that you hope to have, um, and we'll address those in just a few minutes. But through the normal process that you already have today, we would envision inflecting in the new, um, uh, the new parts of your process to attain this mobile app goal. And uh, so we would then be able to come back and see how does it fit in, does it, would we need to change something? Um, and we would plan to do this by, uh, we would hope that you would share with us the resources who are your key resources to help us to define that and to understand where we need to go with that. And um, so we would be relying on you as our stakeholders to help us with um, those key people. So one of the challenges when you're starting off a project is a lot of times people start with the solution. It would be very easy to come here and draw a mobile app and how it would work and use that as the forum. But really, how you approach the project really will set the stage for, are you going to uncover the true business need? Are you going to make sure that you've got the right stakeholders? Are you iterating enough that you know and feel comfortable that you are getting the go-to-market features and not wasting unnecessary time on the nice-to-haves? So Sherry proposed saying, well, what really is core to this environment? Well, it's really that whole exper customer experience from placing an order or having an interest all the way through that order and the food getting to them properly prepared, hot, good, and paid for. 
And so by overlaying the mobile experience over the existing process, you start to see where the gaps are, where the needs are, where the changes are, and there may be opportunities on both sides. Okay. And so we would take, go from process and we would take this into a, a prototype and we would begin to actually uh, put together something um, so that you can begin to get the experience of what's happening. And we would want to actually try to walk through how you would place that order and, you know, are we putting the condiment items ahead of choosing like your breads for your sandwiches or that sort of thing. There might be a particular order you want. And so through this discovery, we're going to um, begin to define things like what we call a data dictionary. We're going to begin to model out how this data flows through. And then we'll also be looking at what are your functional features. Um, and then also we'll begin to define um, non-functional feature features as well. Like for instance, what happens when, you know, what's the number to max out your orders when they're being placed? Are the, if everyone hits uh, at 12 o'clock noon on a Monday, you know, is that going to blow up your system? What's going to happen when someone can't get in and they can call you at your restaurant and they want to know, how do I fix this? So we want to address those kinds of things and we hope to do that through this process. Um, we also want the user to experience, you know, am I going from point A to point B and do, am I missing anything in between point, for those points. And then uh, we'll also, um, we'll also uh, define a GUI front that you're pleased with and that uh, meets your need. And, uh, and then we'll probably, we will we'll, we'll, um, dig a little deeper into each one of these items to give us um, more details. So what you're seeing that Sherry's put together really is showing how starting with a flow or starting with a use case model, starting with a screen design, you decompose and use that as the vehicle to elicit the rest of your requirements. So this back and forth between iterative prototyping, mocking through, ends up influencing your flow, every one of those touch points. And at every one of those touch points, there could be an opportunity for more details. Do we have data impacts or data flow impacts or data validation? Do we have functional or non-functional uh, uh, requirements? And here, it's not only the system capacity, but it's also restaurant capacity. During peak lunch, do you want to limit the number of takeout orders you can handle? Um, do you want metrics to see if there's an opportunity to grow your takeout business? With the user experience, by clicking through, this will drive your user stories. So you're saying, what is that customer experience? What is there? What is the experience on the person taking the order at the restaurant? And drive out those stories, validate, and again, we'll drive more requirements. And then the same thing here is we continue to decompose the process where it needs to be decomposed and trying to hit that 80, 90% accuracy and then move forward and continue to iterate. Yes. And so as we're iterating, then we'll, we'll move into our testing strategy. And this will, I, I would recommend that we come up with a focus group to actually use the mobile app and to actually go through the process and to uh, help us to ensure that we've covered everything. If we haven't covered everything, then we'll need to go back and we'll need to address those issues. Um, and then we'll, uh, through this testing strategy, we'll also do our functional testing, which will help us to determine if we are um, doing what you need us to do. And then from our testing strategy, then we'll actually need to come up with an implementation plan. You know, how are we going to roll this out? How are we going to deploy this? How are we going to support this once it, um, once it actually goes live? And, um, and then I think that we also will uh, get to a point through this entire process where we may hit those marks where someone may say, oh, we really need to have X, Y, or Z. And we'll need to address that. It might not can be addressed in the scope of what we're dealing with in this project, but what we would hope to do is to maybe tack on a phase two and to add those enhancements and improvements at a later phase, unless it's something that just has to be done. And we would have to evaluate that risk at that time. And one of the great things you're seeing, and this is all from Sherry, is she started, she knew from the beginning how she wanted to attack the problem and what she needed to do. And she also fully understood that it's the project manager that lives through the life of the project. The BA lives through the life of the product. So it is from inception all the way through continual enhancements. So this is your advocate to make sure that the best needs of your restaurant, not only now, but when you go live and in the future, are being met. 
And what does that leave us with, Sherry? Well, at the end, that's going to leave us with one happy client. <laughs> and we want to see that smile on your face as our client. Thank you for your time. Fans out there, Sherry. All right, and it was done in record time too. So um, let's start with uh, Ryland, the guy that's got the mic in front of him. I think that's and the best bet. Right. So um, how much will this cost me? Because this has been uh, the, 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 of the of the song and dance I've received today. This has been the best. This has been a pitch. This was a pitch meeting kind of contact, right? Yes. Okay. So no, I hope I didn't say the other. <laughs> Wait, what what did, you, did you say a pitch? She, she, was yeah, yeah. I said that word, she was suggesting I said that word with a B, which I yes, said. Yes, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. No, no, no. Uh, excuse me. That was intended to have a P in a okay. pitch meeting. So, um, very, very... You said it again. Oh. <laughs> it's the mic. Really, it's the mic. This was our opportunity to show you which project team would best meet and help you receive your business goals. So, and I think you did a very good job of that. Um, honestly, the things I thought that were really, really excellent here were um, you clearly showed me the approach you're going to take all the way through, showed me the SDLC that I was going to be involved with, which mm -hmm. I think you can see I've, I've been looking for, so that's kind of a thing. Um, you also did a very good job of saying, here's how we will, um, as, as a BA, as a BA space thing, obviously the product delivery team is usually just concerned with how do I get this thing to you, mm -hmm. and we are tasked with transition requirements and support requirements and so on. I know the three teams up here today are the only ones who address those kinds of things of how am I going to do this going forward, um, how will we handle the business processes and so on. Um, I like that you did an as-is check to say how will we plug into the existing state. Um, so honestly, and, and you, uh, you did, what I kind of wrote down a note about, you sort of gestured towards business rules by saying things like, um, would we want to accept a certain maximum number of orders? That made me start to think about, that's great, maybe as a customer I'm going to need down the road rules about, uh, maybe I can put my order in ahead. Do I want to have a premium ability to set a list standing order of some kind? Um, you know, what, how do we do that? Or do we, do we have a thing in the app that says, you know, we can't accept orders after 10 a.m. today because we're full, whatever it might be. Something to ensure customer uh, service levels. Good, good thinking there. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that Russ had left the room when you made the jab about prototyping. I'm really sorry about that. He, was good. he would have appreciated it tremendously. Um, and uh, I, so I've got one question for you here, and then I'll pass this along to my next judge. Um, uh, it looked to me like during the, you were going to go through iterative cycles of prototyping, and then elicitation, and then some more prototyping, and so on. If I recall right, you might need to go back to that. I'm not sure. That's correct. Okay. Why not take an agile approach and actually be delivering those things at the same time? Would that be something? We can certainly do that. Okay. If that's what you, or if, if that's something that we can negotiate together, and I would agree with that totally. So, so what would be the kind of thing that me as a customer, what would you be looking for for me as a customer to say, yes, we want to do that, or that doesn't sound like, to, as the BA, that doesn't sound like it meets the need, and we should do a prototype and then develop the, the final prototype as opposed to do an agile, iterative, actual delivery. What are the things that would make you make a choice between those two cases? Um, it, it could be if I've worked with you before and we've had maybe rocky experiences before. If I don't know you, then it would be something that uh, I think I would ask for a commitment up front, an understanding of the risk involved. So, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. So one of the things that, it, there's different ways of doing prototypes. You could just do a wireframe, this could be a mock-up, this could be just an HTML5 walkthrough that's not functional, or to Ryland's point, it could be an iterative prototype. It could be where you're actually developing the code using one of the many app development services. So yes, you could be developing real code and modifying, but the key that Sherry was really pushing for was every time you start coding, you're increasing the cost of fixing something if it isn't right. So let's check and prioritize and use this going back and forth between the process. How the process, the user stories, the customer experience, your staff experience, works and integrates with the app and use that as the vehicle for figuring out what the prioritization is, what the order is, what the work effort is, and pick and chip off. But it's a, she approached it from a very collaborative approach. Okay, so I think you're saying, in a, in a, depending on the client on this side, if they're confident about what they need and they can commit to delivery and accept that they're spending exactly. those dollars along the way, great. If they really can't, then let's limit the dollars to them by the knowledge we don't have and then deliver the thing we've discovered. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Here next. <laughs>
Yeah. I have to say, I was so impressed. I kind of want to be like Carrie and Bruno. Go, oh my God! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you covered everything I was looking for. You covered non-functionals. Nobody else covered non-functionals. You worried about support needs. You worried about not only where does the solution fit, but how does it impact the business, and then how does trying it out then make them realize the undiscovered requirements that they didn't know they had that they would figure it out once they put it there. And you had that logical order for the customer. We're really focused on the customer experience and the sponsor satisfaction and, and all of that. And then <coughs> continued thinking about risks and you know techniques for validation that no one had. I was just just so impressed with kind of the overall approach and the fact that you kind of caught all the little details. Even if you do iterate through, you know it doesn't have to be waterfall, but you just you kind of covered the dimensions of the space that are really critical and important, both on the business side and on the the solution side when it comes to rolling it out and supporting it and thinking, oh yeah, we're going to come back and there's future stuff and we can't do it all at once. And so I just, just like carry it. <laughs> <laughs> you can get up and scream. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Holding you back. Yeah, she didn't stand up and dance. I, like, I know. So. The table might be a little wobbly, so I don't, and I don't know if the you hotel has enough. Well enough uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, could, could you flip back to the, to the slide where you talked about the test strategy? questions I had was, you know, there's a lot more to the testing phase, there's a lot more, but you mentioned some specific things. Was this because you thought the VA had a specific role to play in this, or are we just kind of shouting out to, you know, these are things that are going to happen that we need to be involved in the process, or are there specific things that you envision the VA doing to create a test strategy or an implementation plan? Well, in my world, I do that. I, okay. I do all of that. And so I'm responsible for um, driving that and also working with the customer. So, uh, and I, personally, I find that the, there are pitfalls when you don't involve the true end user. Mm -hmm. And if, I'm, if we're over here in a little closet making decisions, then the, they're never going to buy in on it. So I think that the focus group really, really helps us get there. And that helps to drive that business partner to the point where they realize they don't need to be in a closet too. So. And one of the things that we discussed was, you notice there's no should there be a development inserted here? And we actually went back and said, do you put development? Well, development could happen at any point, but what is the VA's role in this? Really, the focus group, and this is one of the first things Sherry mentioned was, how are you going to know if this works? Everyone in a restaurant thinks they know how they want their app to work, but they're not the ones ordering through it. So this focus group had to come in after you'd reached a certain level of prototyping so that someone could review it. And we thought, well, then we also need to start considering how are we going to test this? How are we going to implement it? So, at the very least, we are the owners of the requirements. We are the interpreters of the business need to the testing folks, to the development folks. So we're an active participant in this approach. Um, worst case scenario, we are also putting on our QA hats and going in and digging in and testing and making sure everything works. Now, I like that. In fact, the, the reason I asked that clarifying question is because I think a lot of times we get hung up on the on the VA block definition of what a business analyst is and what a business analyst does. And I like the fact, if, if this was just bullet points on a project plan, I'm very much less impressed with you including it there. But the fact is, the VA does what the VA has to do to help the project be successful. Exactly. Like that. Um, I really like the, the process approach for defining requirements. I think it's a good way of constraining scope, uh, a good way of making sure that we're doing the right things. Um, I like the description and the thought behind the approach. There was a, you know, one of the things, given the time constraints that we had, is what was the thought behind it? Right? We couldn't see polished deliverables, but what was the thought behind uh, each element of the approach? Now, I do have to say, and, and I know it's, it's, it's fun and games, but I couldn't let it pass. Your, your first line is, this is what we think you need. Mm -hmm. Well, careful, right? Sure. It's, not what the, it's not about what the business analyst thinks the, the business. And, and your presentation reflected that it wasn't, in fact, that. It was, Turned it around. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you had a little stumble there in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Other thing, there's a, there's a pretty, pretty hefty list of, uh, list of deliverables there. Um, so the, yeah, one of the, and this is again partially observation. Often we do things because the process says we do. That what I would have maybe liked to have seen here is who's going to use those? Why are we doing these? Because if there's not somebody waiting on these things to do some work, you did a really good job of explaining the why for everything. But okay, I see this list. So why do we need all those? Who's going to use those? Who's waiting on them? Who's going to do something with them? I'm sure you have it. Again, just part of the, would have been nice to hear something about that. 
other than that, I'm, I'm with Kate. Very, very solid, well-rounded, uh, good presentation. Appreciate it. All right. Excellent. All right, so we have some stories from the judges. Ryland, do you want to kick us off? Ten. back there. 